Hello everyone and welcome back to this lesson dedicated to emergency plans for cultural heritage institutions. In this part, uh, we are talking about the different work phases for the drawing up of an emergency plan for a museum. And we have already seen the uh, first phase, which was the gathering of information and documentation that is already in possession of the museum. The phase two, which was the flow analysis of the museum and the phase three, which was the actual risk analysis. In this phase, we will see the actual drawing up of an emergency plan. So at this point, with all of these information available, the drafting of the actual emergency plan can be initiated. The emergency plan is a very dense document that contains all the information that may be useful in case of emergency. And in particular, consists of different sections. The first section is dedicated to identifying the emergency team, describing the role of each member and their contact information. In emergency situation, uh, it is very easy to panic and to act on impulse. However, our impulse does not always push us uh, to put the most efficient actions into practice. So for this reason, it is important to plan and be clear about our actions in advance for emergency management. Furthermore, panic is a very common feeling that affects other people and condition their behavior. Another important concept uh, to bear in mind is that if everyone's responsibilities are clear to everyone, uh, it will be easier for the team to collaborate and communicate. Better communication between people also make it possible to guarantee greater flexibility in the procedures, uh, also to address the elements of unpredictability that each emergency brings. So, as you can see in this slide, this is an example of the possible uh, members of the emergency plan that you can identify. And uh, we always suggest to um, identify three types of members. The first one is a coordinator, someone who gives other um, people the tasks and who chooses when to start with the uh, procedures and whether to modify the procedures of the emergency plan or not, which uh, who is the emergency response coordinator. Then it is important to have someone who knows the museum structures and areas very well and who knows how to um, switch on and switch off the security system. So someone uh, who has a technical um, technical uh, skill on the on the building, so a building recovery manager, and lastly, someone who knows the collection very well and who knows the basics of cultural heritage conservation, so who knows the rudiments of the procedures that have to be put in place in case of emergency on the artworks. In the second section um, are described all the emergency procedures div divided by each type of risk. The plan um, in this way acts as a sort of check checklist, a track for the implementation of all the security activities quickly and effectively and allows you to avoid unnecessary waste of time and energy that could generate uh, generally occur in time of crisis. Um, timely pr planning of emergency procedures in advance guarantees a faster response and allows for better uh, collaboration among the, among the employees of the museum. So in this section, uh, the um, alarm procedures are described in detail and they are divided for each risk scenario. In the third section, the tasks and responsibilities are 
um, detailed and identified for each uh, member of the emergency team. And identifying in advance uh, the members of the emergency team for the rescue of cultural heritage allows to clearly define the tasks and the responsibility of each one in order to avoid the overlapping tasks and the uncertainties in the execution of procedures. Um, furthermore, identifying everyone's tasks allows to significantly reduce the intervention times in the event of an emergency and to avoid the wasting time defining procedures. So in this section, it is important to uh, define all the uh, tasks and responsibility for each member of the um, emergency team. And it is important to identify the responsibilities, the action to be implemented immediately after the emergency, uh, as the emergency progress and after the end of the emergency. In this last section, um, this last section is dedicated to identify all the safety information about the building. And it's very important to uh, remember that these, uh, the external, external sharing of this section may represent a huge risk for the museum security. So this section is divided into annexes and they all regard the safety of the building and people. Um, so these are some examples of the possible annexes that have to be put inside the emergency plan. Uh, so first of all, a list of the personal contacts of all the museum employees with an indication of the time that it takes them to reach the museum in, in the event of an emergency. Um, then the list containing the salvage priorities with the information regarding the procedures for handling, dismantling and um, transport the artworks. The floor plans of the entire museum with a graphic indication of the location of the priorities inside the museum spaces. Then the emergency kits, so the safety kits with emergency materials and their location inside the building, both for the um, safety of people, so for example, PPEs, and both for the handling, packing of the artworks. Then a list of all the external suppliers, companies, institutions, associations, and so on, which can guarantee a support in the event of an emergency. Then the general guidelines uh, for saving the collection so that even those uh, who are unfamiliar with the artworks um, carry out, can carry out rescue operations that do not further damage the collection. Then some guidelines for communicating with the authorities containing the numbers of the people to call and an example of a typical call to follow. After that, a fillable form to document all the movements of the artworks in case of evacuation. Um, so you can keep track of all of the areas uh, in which the artworks are transferred to a fillable form to register all presences at the scene of the accident to prevent the entry of unauthorized personnel inside the um, emergency area, the identification of all the safe spaces to carry out the emergency procedures, then the instructions for turning off the electrical and plumbing systems, and Lastly, all information relating to the insurance coverage of the building and the collection and the person to contact in the event of a claim. So thank you very much for your attention. That's it for this part. We will see you in the next parts.